Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And finally, I think the monsoons are here. We've had a false launch already, haven't we? So the monsoons were here officially the end of June, and then they put the forest back down on lockdown. Everything's no fire bans, just, just kind of. And then all of a sudden it's raining again. So uh, this, my gardens just look, well, amazing right now. We got a major storm earlier this week. We've had some moisture, humidity. It's been warm. And so the gardens just, its a if you can just get your landscapes to limp along in the month of June, first part of July, the rains come. It's just a matter of time when they come. And all of a sudden you come into it a whole other growing season. And so you're seeing the maples. My maples just look amazing. Junipers, you can see new growth coming out of them just within a few days. Your vegetables and herbs, of course, they they love all this. Anything sh- uh, shallow rooted is going to do well. But really, those summer shrubs, those are the ones that really benefit. They got a little bit smaller root zone than, let's say, a big maple or sycamore or aspens. Uh, but but uh, a crepe myrtle, rose of Sharon, butterfly bush. But if you deadhead some of those summer shrubs, roses, uh, uh, Vitex, Chase Tree, Desert Willows, any any of those summer blooming shrubs. Some are very large, some are smaller. If you were to deadhead those, fertilize them with a little bit of rain, oh, they would be right back into bloom within two, three weeks. Boom, full color. And so I pruned back some of my Chase Tree. This is a, a tall tree up about, oh, well above head high, 10, 12 feet tall, kind of vase-shaped. It's drought hardy. I mean, this thing has been in bloom for, in the heat, it's just been in bloom looking fabulous. Went through and just nipped all those spent flowers, fertilized it with a seven for all purpose. It just came right back. And already it's starting. It's been two weeks already. I'm starting to see new uh, blue flowers coming up. Pretty common for potentia, spireas. Now, all, pretty much all the, I could just spout off some names, but all of your summer blooming plants, if they've got spent flowers on them, butterfly bush can come right back into bloom. Uh, your repeat blooming uh, li- uh, lilac, yeah, bloomerang, if you just deadhead those, fertilize them. The key is to fertilize, deadhead, so you take the pressure. If it's not going to focus on seed, it's going to focus on more flowers. Fertilize it so it's got enough food to Put on those flowers. Plants do not like to live on a water diet by any means. Uh, They need some nutrients to help them form all these new flowers, foliage. But if you do that and you get some rain, that's the magic. Here's the beauty of rain. What happens with that, um, as you get lightning, as lightning goes through the air, it actually burns the air. Literally, it, it burns the air. So you'll get, you'll load up that air or the rain with nitrogen. So now you've got nitrogen nitrogen infused raindrops that is perfectly balanced pH. Nature is set up for rain. It just they they're used to rain. The pH of the rain has the biggest benefit of anything else. It's perfectly neutral. It's what they're all looking for. It's why you feel so good. It's, it's why some folks actually collect rain to drink rainwater because it balances that pH out better. Well, plants really respond to that. Watch, though, your bugs. Bugs also grow just as fast. And so this week I went out. We had some uh, backyard barbecue. We're just enjoying the backyard. We're outdoors a lot right now. I'm outdoors. I I do, do not. I cannot have flies. I will not tolerate flies or mosquitoes. I won't tolerate flies. Lisa does not tolerate mosquitoes. For some reason, she's just a magnet. Have you noticed you get to 10 people together, there's one person in the group is like, they all bite them. There's one kid or in in our case, it's Lisa. She's the magnet. All of us, none of us are bothered. She's eaten alive. Well, I I just go after them. So I sprayed the backyard with multi-purpose insect spray. I, I just went through 
and eh, once a week or so, I just hose down the area right around these big entertaining patio areas, the front patio where we, we sip coffee, those two areas. We've got two main seating areas that we just truly enjoy. I go through and I spray with a hose-in sprayer. It's like, like a sprayer you would spray your car with. You rinse it off or, or wash it down with. It's one of those. Only it's got a bottle on the bottom where you can dial in and go, oh, I want this to be set up for two tablespoons and a gallon of water, and it automatically mixes. It's the best tool ever. Automatically mixes at the right ratio depending on how much water goes through. I'll go through and I'll, I'll hit all the dry uh, shrub areas, those dark, those rich, thick shrubs. That's where the flies and mosquitoes hang out during the day. So they're congregated. I focus in on those tall perennials, uh, thick shrubs. There's certain areas where I just focus, and it eliminates them. Well, I was spraying. I've got some great big Cecil Bruner roses. These are magnificent roses. they got to be 10 by 10 by 10. We're using them uh, in between the property lines, and it just divides. You know, that's your, that's your house. This is our house. And roses, you just don't want to cross them. They're blooming, beautiful pink flowers. Cecil Bruner's. They just adapt so well. They're easy to grow. Uh, but that's also where bugs can hang out. I was spraying those down, and the amount of leaf hoppers that were on that rose was ridiculous. These are great big bugs, great big green bugs. They, they're, they're tall and flat and narrow and solid green. They look like a grasshopper, only with, with a great big hump, and they're, they're not as wide but taller, just as long. Leaf hoppers, they eat the leaves. They just hop around from plant to plant, and thus the name, leaf hopper. Um, they were hopping around the plants, and they were on the rows. Must have been cool. They like to eat some. They generally are not a problem as far as eating foliage. What happens is leaf hoppers spread disease. They'll be three doors down. They'll eat something down there. They'll, uh, it's covered in powdery mildew or a leaf spot or leaf curl. They'll be on a peach that has leaf curl, and they'll come over, and they'll light on your rose, and they'll eat on that. All of a sudden, that same virus is in their mouth, on their feet, on their bodies, and they just spread disease around the neighborhood all over the place, much less your yard. They're spreading it everywhere. And so you really don't want leaf hoppers in your in your landscape i mean a few are okay you'll hear them clicking at night you'll just hear this at dusk you'll hear this click 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 those are leaf hoppers uh they're, they're just sitting out there hanging out they don't come out in swarms they're usually onesie twosies i sprayed these cecil bruner roses all of a sudden i've got three or four leaf hoppers dead uh, sorry it, i wanted them dead uh, i was going after flies and mosquitoes but i got a few leaf hoppers too but it keeps that disease down. And so that's what spreads. Right now, you're starting to see powdery mildew on roses. Uh, the, the foliage will be covered in white. It looks like a powder, thus the name powdery mildew. This is a spore that starts to eat the sugars in the leaf. And so the plant will start look having this off hazy color to it, and it will stop blooming because now the plant is literally being consumed by bacteria. And so the plant, this is serious. It can actually kill the plant. But it's more serious because it spreads so easily amongst other roses. Some roses are more prone to it than others, like yellows and blues. Those color roses seem to be more prone. Whites can be prone to powdery mildew. Reds and pinks, less so. It can spread, but less so. But no matter what, you just want to get on that. It's very easy to control. Uh, we've got a product here at the Garden Center called Revitalize. That's the name on the products put out by Bonide. Revitalize, you spray the foliage of this plant and it makes the plant more robust. It actually helps it fight that powdery mildew from the inside out. So it makes it much more a much more robust plant. So you spray it's a liquid, you spray the foliage, it gets rid of the powdery mildew. If you've had problems, uh, hold on. If you've had problems in the past, just go ahead and spray it now because you're going to have powdery mildew. It's showing up so rampantly right now. We're so many customers coming in that uh, you just ought to spray because the bugs are out growing just as fast as the as the garden as the plants are, and you just you want to keep things safe, keep them controlled, keep them healthy, keep them growing so they'll bloom for you. So, deadhead, fertilize, pray for rain. You're going to have a fabulous growing season from now through October is when a sweet spot. It's just a really good time to 
to encourage plants to grow and to plant new plants in your own yard. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Trumpeting Vine, and Butterfly Bush. Monarch and Swallowtail Butterflies flock to Waters Butterfly Bush with spectacular 8-inch flowers filling the yard with fragrance and beauty. Heat, drought, wind only make this shrub bloom more. Tough enough to grow in clay, but hardy enough to shine in containers. With so many colors to choose, every yard should have at least two. You'll only find impressive butterfly bush at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies, so don't forget to feed your plants. Water's 744 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants for the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener, green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? And I noticed on our uh, Instagram, oh, welcome, Lisa. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. I noticed on the Instagram and Facebook feeds, rain. Like as soon as it rains, this is the only area in the country where you get one cloud goes through the city and (laughs) and. Uh, social media just lights up with it's rainy yay uh, half of my feed was we don't see any rain the other one was I had over a half an inch yeah <laughs> which is typical of rains here in the mountains that's that's what always happens I was talking to a friend who's out in uh, Quailwood she goes no we didn't get any rain I was like oh well we got a nice little rain so pretty put, typical to put a video up while it was raining we had the grill out so we're like could grill yes, it was earlier grilling. in the week <laughs> and uh uh, it's pouring down rain. Things are ready to come off the, the Barbie. And I uh, had to get an umbrella to go out and pull <gasps> off this, the meat and stuff. An it was umbrella. awesome. It was great. <laughs> what is an umbrella? Please tell. I know. <laughs> it was half broken, bent. It hardly gets used. <laughs> it broke probably five years ago. But it was good enough to get stuff there off the barbecue. There you go. Yeah. So the, range, the landscape looks amazing. Just Much, like yeah. what difference actual rain, nature nature's water makes for your landscape from mm-hmm. tomatoes to the trees look better oh my goodness it does make a big difference yeah which kind of leads to one of our questions this week we have a question from pam who lives in the prescott area she has a, a piece of property with many native pinions yeah. and ponderosas and her question was should i water them since we've had so very little rain yeah which- so i taught this actually at the last class Mm -hmm. last week's weekend's class it was on bugs and stuff and so your natives especially if you've got some beautiful natives and there's some of them are just character they're hundreds of years old uh they've got character to them Um, some are small you just you can't treat the entire forest but some of them are really valuable Mm -hmm. so if you were to lose those the value of your property goes down just because you can't replace a 500 year old ponderosa or pinion pine or juniper and so those what I taught the class was water those plants May, June, basically maybe July. And that's the only time you have to water them. Take a soaker hose. A, we, t- we have a little sprinkler head that goes on the end of our hose. Just kind of spits things out for a while. Uh, we'll water our plants once a month in May, June, and July. Those are usually the dry months. As soon as the monsoons come, so we just watered our landscape again in August because it was so dry that we broke out certain strategic areas we watered. And what that does, I've got drip irrigation. I shouldn't need to water. Well, well, yeah, but these are natives we're talking about, and maybe your drip irrigation isn't enough Mm -hmm. for plants when it's this dry this long. So we really hadn't had moisture since... March, April, we had one rain event in July, and then it's been basically dry since then, since April, except for one rain event. So things are bone dry. 
plants can get stressed. And what happens is, as a pine, as a pine tree especially, as uh, any kind of evergreen, as they get stressed and they get dry, they start to send off this creosote smell. It's like something you can't smell, but insects, they know. And they're flying around the forest looking for easy prey, easy lunch, just like all of us. So, so bark beetle, ips beetle, flathead borer, tip borer, there's a whole bunch of things that eat trees, and they all like evergreens. And so if you water those things, it keeps that, that smell, that scent they throw off, going, hey, I'm easy prey, I'm really stressed out, uh, why don't you come have a lunch over here on my bark? I mean, it keeps them from doing that. And so they'll go over to your neighbor's yard, they aren't doing that, and they'll kill that tree. Literally entire neighborhoods have been wiped out uh, from pine trees, bark beetles, scales, because they got stressed. And the, the gardeners that took care of their trees, those trees were left standing. Those that just left to go stressed, that those are the ones that were eaten, had problems. So I told, I told folks in the class, fertilize, water it once, deep soak it, and then give your the important trees plant protector. It's a liquid systemic. You pour it around the base of the tree. It absorbs that pesticide, that, that bug killer, bug control, underneath the bark. So it keeps bark beetle from burrowing through and getting established. Mm-hmm. It, it Basically, it's like an antibiotic for trees. And so we've done all of ours. Fertilize with the 744, put the plant protector on and water it. Now I think for those of you, like we had over a half an inch at our house, probably don't need, I'm not going to water again. It's, it's enough. Uh, but those of you that did not see that storm, hopefully you will shortly, I would water them just once a month until you see some moisture. Mm-hmm. Then the pressure is off at that point. Really, it's this gap. May through whenever the start of the monsoons are, that's when plants are most stressed focus on that time frame and you should be okay so did we answer that we go back to yeah Yeah. yes water if you have it watered water yeah absolutely unless you get a really good rain yeah that's it keep our fingers crossed for that i like the way you did it in 15 seconds or less that's (laughs) of course woman explains it much woman of few words you are a man of many words (laughs) between us we're balanced (laughs) well questionable um, so, yeah, I think we have a lot of watering questions this week. So uh, Ada has a problem with her roses, pretty mature tea roses. Um, they've pretty much stopped blooming, and she's finding brown tips on the edge of her leaves. Yeah. So Water. Water. Yeah, it's just yeah. water. Just water some more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pray for rain. Rain will make all the difference. So yeah. what's happening is the drip systems that you had on there, let's say you plant a rose, typically a rose is a two or a five gallon plant you'd put one emitter on that if you're really a good gardener you might put two but that's the most you put that on the tree is now or this rose bush or the hedge whatever is now mature so three four five years later it's now still got those emitters right at the trunk but the roots are all you know three feet beyond those emitters all the feeder roots are well beyond that emitter you had on there, you need to tune up your irrigation or you'll see these brown spots. So really we should have taken that one emitter that's probably at the base of that rose, taken a tee on it and teed off. And we should have come out probably 18 inches on either side and put another emitter on both of those. Now we're watering the same amount. The timer is set the same, but we have two emitters instead of one. And most importantly, the emitters are where the feeder roots are. At the base of a tree or a shrub, there are no, there's no roots that can actually absorb anything. There's no food, no water. You spend, you throw your summer fertilizer down at the base of a tree. You wasted all of it, mm-hmm. unless you put it out at the drip line. That, that out towards the outer branches. That's where the, their fine microscopic hairs are that can pull up food and water. And so that's why you're seeing stress when it's been so dry. Normally, we'll get some more moisture from the monsoons before this, you know, one or two more storms. That's right. enough to take the edge off. Mm-hmm. But because we didn't have that, we're seeing more more drip irrigation faults. You're uh, seeing the problems weaknesses. show up. Yeah, yeah definitely. You've definitely. got a weakness, and it's not just with those roses. It's mm-hmm. throughout your landscape. You need to have a professional come in and tune that up or take a weekend and just you know go buy 20 new heads and some extra spaghetti tubing and some teas and just Mm -hmm. go go through and 
tune it up yourself. It's very easy to do. Do you think it'd be a bad idea? I mean, I agree what you're saying is right, but would it be a bad idea to kind of just maybe go over and hand water those yeah, spots for a while, sure. try to get some saturation back into that soil? So for us, we've got the, again, once a month, we soak our landscape, the, the strawberry beds were wilting. They were just so dry. Uh, over a week ago. So I took the hose out, dragged it like 50 feet of hose out, got to the bottom part of the property and just ran it for like, I think I tuned up the car or washed the car or something or cleaned the garage mm -hmm. while it was just running half a day, maybe two, three, maybe a couple hours. And then went back, everything soaked up. You can see it's all perked up. Mm -hmm. And when you load up the soil with that much moisture, it lasts for weeks, right. especially if it's already drip system. So mm -hmm. you're just gapping or filling in the weaknesses of your drip system until the rains come. Mm -hmm. So you're acting as mother nature uh, until the total rains actually get here. So yeah, yeah, I think that's important, especially for big trees and shrubs. Yeah. They get so stressed out. You're going to have issues with insects mm -hmm. if you don't do that. I would say make sure you put a timer on or yeah. a timer on your phone so you don't forget you have the water ready. Especially if we're the city of Prescott water or <laughs> expensive water. If you're on a well, you all don't care about water <laughs> bills. you got free water. All you got to pay for is electricity. Oh, yeah. All right. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We will be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Butterfly Bush, and Trumpeting Vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. I love the late summer, fall planting season. And here's the reason why. It's less about preparing the garden for how it's going to grow for the rest of the season. This is more of a decoration season. So we've gotten our first crops of mums. Uh, they're just cracking color. First crops of pansies, of kales. Uh, your fall, uh, fall vegetables are just in. They grow so fast right now that they, they crack color. They're very showy, bright colors. I think of them as more of accessorizing what I already have. That's what a pumpkin is. You put it out by the front door, it's just accessory. It just looks good. It's decoration. Put it with a mom and a, and a pansy or an aster or some dianthus or, or phlox, and it just looks, just brings it right out and goes, look at how pretty, how, how the best season is fall. Aren't you happy? Come on in. It's, that's what plants can do for you. Right now, I'm trying to look for areas where I can pl plug a few pansies. We grew some uh, specialty pansies. These are pansies are, don't let the name fool you, they love, they're super tough. They love the cold. They'll go right through any amount of fall, winter, cold, snow, frost. They love all of that. They will be blooming now through, so nonstop, through next June. For the next year, they're going to be solid colored blooms with the cutest little flowers that have kind of monkey faces on them. They're just so cute. They smell good. They're bright. They're cheery. So if things are getting overgrown or they get diseased, I'm looking to plug a few of those in just, just sporadically. 
I'll do more of those later, but for now, I just want a few in, and it's just fun to see the new, newest mom coming in. Come on. Who doesn't love moms? I did have a question from someone that came in and said, hey, my moms I planted three years ago, they've been in bloom for a month. Aren't they supposed to bloom in the fall? I'm going, well, no, not really. Our season is so long, it starts so soon here, that moms actually have two bloom cycles. Not unusual at all. The way that we do it here at the garden center is we actually take off the buds, the first buds in the greenhouse. We'll actually, they'll start flushing out. We'll cut them all off. So they'll force to bloom when we want them to. In your own gardens, which in my own personal gardens, I just let them bloom. They'll be in bloom in July. They just look good. They'll bloom for a month. Then they kind of take a rest. Then you'll see the foliage underneath flush past that. They'll set a whole other set of blossoms on top of the spent flowers, and they'll be in bloom in October again. And they'll just keep blooming right through the end of the year. Amazing how chrysanthemums grow. Now, at this point, I've been planting chrysanthemums so long in my gardens that I just don't, I don't need any more of them. But I still want some by the front door. I still want some in my containers out front. I've shifted my thinking now because I've got so many in the yard already. don't need more. Um, I use them as a, an annual. I plant them, and I fully expect them to look glorious for about four months. Then I go, okay, you're not blooming anymore. You're out of here. And I, I compost them. They're just they're, they're discarded. I'm not going to plant them out in the yard anymore. I don't have any more space for them. I'd rather have a, a, a blooming phlox or a, a new vinca or a new sage or something different that I don't have already. Unless it's a new color. I have actually been known. This is a gardener. Now, again, my name's Ken. I own a garden center. And this, so I can be a little more avant-garde with this. Uh, what I do is I'll dig some up going, I'm just tired of orange. I mean, I, that was f so five years ago. Look at this new bright yellow with a purple variegation tip on it. That's so cool. And I'll just swap them out. And so I think we're okay. I mean, come on, for, for $7.99, you can, you can have a whole new color. You're not committed forever with this mom. I think we, we live in America, the greatest country that's ever existed on the planet you can, you spent how much on that new cappuccino, whatever frappa thing? It, you, for that price, you can have a, a flower whenever you want it. And so I just change them out every once in a while. It's okay. So the, the summer and fall is my best favorite time. Uh, spring is more active because the the gardens are so bare. Just things have died back. I've I've double turned my vegetable garden. Flowers are ready to go in, but they're not planted yet. So there's a lot of, it's laborious almost. And it's cold and windy. Right now it's, yeah, you might get an afternoon rain, but the mornings are beautiful. Uh, I don't have all the laborious piece. I'm just adding a few color here or there. But those crops are starting to show up. I just got a whole new crop of aspens. If you've been waiting for aspen, I mean, cookie cutter, beautiful, perfect. The perfect aspen. I just had a hundred of them show up. Maples, glorious, beautiful red maples just showed up. Some of them with trunks you can't even put your hands around. There are instantaneous trees. This is a great time to be planting or plugging those in, spotting those plants out in the yard because they root out just instantly with a deep, large, I mean, just large root structure. I wish I had time to go into why now it works better than spring, but we're out of this segment. But I find my plants I put in now through fall actually have a better take, uptake, success rate than spring plantings. Well, we got Lisa Waters coming in right after this. Be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-Home Garden Consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. 
Waters Garden Companion Plants by our maple, verbena, crepe myrtle, and rose of Sharon hibiscus. Rose of Sharon is a mountain hardy hibiscus with an enemy like blooms. Each stem of this hardy hibiscus is packed with buds. She makes a beautiful informal hedge or screen and is easily trained into small trees. Available Prescott colors show in blue, purple, white, red, and pink for years of enjoyment. You'll find breathtaking hibiscus here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Okay, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She's got this segment. This is all about her and what's what's going on in her gardens, although we share much of the same dirt or <laughs> soil, uh, pretty much you have your gardens, I have mine. You have container gardens. Yes. And I have the rest of the yard. But my container gardens got hijacked this year. By? By you. Well, I wanted to try vegetables and things. Whatever. It, it failed miserably a couple times. <laughs> yeah. So corn, don't grow corn in <laughs> containers. It's way too big, but it's really cool when they're small. I think what I'll do next year is put corn in. Don't worry about the ears. Let them get up to size and then just cut it off and top it. Uh Kind of like a reed or something like uh, cattails. Mm -hmm. Just kind of horsetail or something. Just try. Should be fun. They're drying out. Why don't we get some pots just for you? (laughs) And you can leave my pots alone. Nah, I'd rather use your space. (laughs) I know you like me in your space. That's why you married me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tomatillos went, went crazy. Yeah. Cucumbers are too long. Uh, there are just certain things that didn't work. Right. Some things are working great. True. Peppers look good. True. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, this is your segment. I will yes. shut up now and it's all about you. Oh, yeah. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> so I was reading one of your articles because frequently you'll shoot them over to me before yeah. you kind of send them out just to make sure there's no blatant issues in there that's right and so i was reading your one on uh kids in the garden uh how to get kids interested in gardening and how to have your kids and grandkids out there and blah 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 so uh reading along and you say you're reading along and you said i have six six kids and three grandkids and i went six kids (laughs) i don't know is there a marriage i don't know about (laughs) or Something you need to tell me, honey. In, in my head, we do have six kids. In laws count. Once you once once your kids marry someone, they are just welcomed in as okay. not in laws. But so we got four children, three daughters, one son. Mm-hmm. Our oldest daughter got married to a fabulous guy. They live in Austin, Texas. So yeah. Jeremy Suspedis. They live there. So. I, I, Jeremy's a son. I okay. love him just as much as my own James, our our actual mm-hmm. biological son, married Teresa, our daughter-in-law. She's not a daughter-in-law. She's the daughter, and they divided. They they provided three <laughs> children, you know, grandchildren yes. that we tr- just really enjoy. Yeah. So I kind of go if, tally sheet. If you're just keeping a scoreboard in the sky. Okay. Six children, three grandchildren. All right. Maybe I should have been more specific and tried I... to divvy it all up, but uh, it's okay. I with... was just checking. Oh, okay. No okay. other marriages yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ooh, I'm afraid. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> Okay, well, that makes it much better, I understand now. But I did like your article. I liked the concept of uh, introducing children to the garden. Yeah. Whether it's your own children or your grandchildren, your neighbor's kids, I don't care. Uh, just introducing children, young people, uh, to gardening. I think it's just huge. Number one, yeah. it gets them outdoors, Yeah. where we definitely all need to be outdoors more. And two, it just gives them an appreciation for how things grow and what it takes to make something grow and just the beauty of it. So we had our grandkids came over a couple weeks weeks ago and I've been saving some dead bugs from big beetles, <laughs> big locusts, cicadas, that kind of stuff. Been saving them, storing them up. They're all dry, carcassed, whatever, but they're they're a bug and mm-hmm. they're as big as your as big as their hand. Right. Uh, I showed a huge, you know, four inch long beetle to the grand grandsons mm-hmm. and they freaked out. <laughs> 
show they were eight and you know six, six, during first and nine fourth and six, grade nine yeah. and six showed it to my two-year-old you know granddaughter she goes oh she's all over it. let's pet it let's name it let's put bows <laughs> on it we'll take it in and play play you know yeah. tea with it or we'll just like she thought she was like, manhandling it she's going funny. whoa she's I like this gal. That's pretty yeah, good. Not afraid of anything. No. <laughs> so, anyways, the kids are different. Yeah, definitely. So, you had mentioned some good ideas in the article, but I'll expand upon yes, it a please. little bit. So, I can't remember if you mentioned herbs or not, but I think if you want to start introducing kids to being outside or experiencing that growing something, herbs are a great way to go. Number one, because it hits so many of the sensory experiences. That smell, because herbs always, each one has a distinct smell. So herbs, uh, that f- tasting it, that flavor, because give them a little bit of herb, let them chomp on it, let them yeah. see what they think. So certainly you can taste, smell, uh, just the look at, the visual, the touch. A lot of the different, like the mints have a different touch than, say, the sage. Yeah. You know, it has that real fuzzy touch. So, so one, I think uh, mints are so easy to grow and there's so many different kinds i mean right now we have ginger mint orange mint chocolate mint peppermint and spearmint oh my gosh i mean how fun would that be to grow some pots of all those different mints and then just kind of have them try them yeah uh put them in a drink and make a drink with them or do do some baking with them and see what the flavors change come into the garden center have to bring the kids with you. We love seeing families here. And have them touch and taste and smell. All of our herbs are organic, non-GMO. Not, nothing we sell is genetically modified. They're mm-hmm. all organic. Mm-hmm. Touch and smell and see which ones they like. Have them pick one yeah. and go take it home and plant. That's their mm-hmm. mint now. Oh, what should we do with it? Let's go make ice cubes and put them into the <laughs> oh, yeah. tea or whatever. Let's uh-huh. go. This, there's all kinds of recipes and fun things right. to do. Mm-hmm. And then differently, the smelling. So rosemary and lavender. Um, just go rub the foliage a little bit. It's amazing the smells you get off of that. So that'd be terrific for them to do. And then in your own garden, say you have tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchinis that you're growing, have them help you harvest the seed out of them. Yeah. And then plant those seed next year and see what comes up. And we always grow a great big gigantic pumpkin. Yeah takes over the backyard essentially Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it's really fun for the kids because it is so huge and then you get the you know they're looking at the pumpkins and they see how much they grow each time so that's something fun because you're kind of keeping track of the growth of it until you harvest it in october when the kids came over in in october we harvest this it's bigger than normal pumpkin Mm -hmm. we went hide the pumpkin so they came over we had big (laughs) piles of leaves because it's october they jumped in them Mm-hmm. And then I went, okay, I'm going to play hide the pumpkin. You guys, you boys go in the garage. I'll hide it. You come try to find it. I hid it under the leaves, underneath uh, by then the, the big, um, big plants in the bushes on top of the roof. They just had a ball with that. And then when we get all done, we drop it off the back deck mm-hmm. and watch it smash and let me tell you they're not going to forget their granddad anytime soon they're not <laughs> and the funny thing about that is we have the next season all these little pumpkins yeah. coming yeah, out yeah, yeah. It's part of it yeah. really are <laughs> but that's still fun and and going back to seed harvesting so if you're growing marigolds you know which they're again has that great smell not the best but it's a good smell you're teaching them to smell things but you can also harvest the seeds so marigolds your uh, a lot of your wildflowers yeah. your echinaceas your galardias things like that teaching them how to pick the seeds let them dry where do you store them how do you store them labeling labeling them so a lot of fun things you can do if you just get a little bit creative and especially i was thinking now with so many kids doing online schooling or you know the I feel for the parents and the teachers too. and the kids. Yeah. Oh, what a nightmare. But maybe you could do something fun. Make something fun out of it. And you're also teaching them about nature, how to care for something. You're getting them outside. You're letting them touch the dirt, which we all need to be out touching the dirt more. Uh, it has a lot of positive benefits to it. So many things are so easy to grow by seed. You know, beans and peas, mm-hmm. nasturtiums. They're just grass, just lawn. Put in a little. Put, don't even put it out in the yard. Put it in a saucer or mm-hmm. put some potting soil. And just watch it come up and emerge. So, mate, bulbs are the same way. Just, just so easy. Yeah, and we're moving into that. It's hard to tell right now because it's so hot. But we're going to be pretty soon putting in our fall yeah. crops. So, 
kales, lettuces, things that they could harvest right out of the garden and eat. Yeah, great idea. And we're starting to see those crops come in now. So, and it, yesterday or earlier this week, 20 degree difference between before the rain and after the rain. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to drop. That temperature is dropping now. So the daylight's starting to get shorter already. So I think it's time when you can put those crops in. You could start planting kales and cabbages and mm -hmm. bro Brussels sprouts. and put. You can add another grape or berry. It's, it's sure. all good to go. Yeah. Great, great advice. Gardening with kids, spreading that passion to the next generation. Ken Elisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Mm -hmm. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Ouch! Oh man, another rock! Hi, I'm Rusty. You know, the shovel you're destroying trying to dig that hole? Sure, I get it. We got these beautiful plants at Waters Garden Center. Waters asked if they could plant them for you, but no. You had to do it yourself, even though they would plant, deliver, and guarantee your plants for two years. I hope I don't end up like that old pickaxe. Ouch! Prevent yard tool abuse. Waters Garden Center. They plant, deliver, and guarantee. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. I have helped quite a number of customers this week at the Garden Center with privacy screens, like a theme. People are pulsating in going, I need to screen off a neighbor or something's going on. Buildings going over across the fence, something's happening where people are wanting to screen, uh, block a living wall. So when they're playing, I thought I'd go over, what are some of the easiest to grow plants you can put in right now that would fill in, root out and, and give you some more growth this year, but really flush out. By planting now, you can actually have far more growth next spring because you'll have it fully rooted. Let's start with the larger upright evergreen. So at the garden center, we have separated out the plants into three main sections for privacy specifically. Large shrubs, large upright evergreens, this would be junipers, cypress, cedars, that kind of thing, and then spruce and pine. All three do well. And if you just need one kind of plant strategically placed out there and it will block it. Let's say neighbors got up, they're overlooking their deck and looking into your back patio, your bedroom, dining room, whatever. Uh, that's where pine trees and spruce do really well, especially if you can get a larger one. So Austrian pine is probably the number one seller, hardiest variety, fastest growing pine tree. It grows here. Everyone comes in wanting a ponderosa pine, but really ponderosa is not good for privacy screens. You're really planting a trunk and it will have some foliage up there and they don't look that good when they're small. They're leggy, tall, they're tall skin, they're fast growing, long needles, but Austrian pine is related to a ponderosa pine. It's got the same long needle, but it holds its foliage right down to the ground. That's why that particular variety Austrian, not Australian, but Austrian pine does really, really well at the high elevation. Thick, rich, green, fast growing, grows 18, 24 inches a year. Central leader, just big swooping branches, fills in quick. You wouldn't really make a hedge out of it. If you're doing a hedge, well, I'm, while, I'm, while I'm on that, before I switch tracks here, uh, spruce, uh, People new to the area, especially from desert areas, you go, I don't know the name of it, but it's the one that looks like a Christmas tree. Okay, that's spruce. 
we'd probably have three or four varieties of spruce here at the at the Colorado spruce, Fat Albert spruce, Baccarat, Hoop, Hoops Eye. They're all related to each other. Big central leader, and then it has big swooping branches that come down, but it forms this perfect pyramidal shape. You can use those, especially if you buy a little bit larger one. They're slower growing, not really. They don't grow as tall as fast, but they put on foliage all the way around, 360. It's got foliage every from the lowest point to the highest point. It's got foliage everywhere, so very thick, rich, robust. The central leader, though, that tall branch that grows straight up, the trunk only grows maybe 12, 18 inches at most if it's truly happy. So it's a... It's a click slower than, say, an Austrian pine or a Scotch pine, but it puts on this perfect shape. If you want to draw the eye to a certain area of the landscape, now spruce is a great way to go. You decorate it with little lights in the holidays. It just, it just looks good all the time. Those are your specimens. I want to plant one and maybe two, and then it'll block it, and that's good. If you need a living wall, we need to move on to something that grows thicker, faster, because we need several of them. That's where your upright evergreen section comes into play. Upright evergreens are, uh, they just, they're tall evergreens. We're surrounded by juniper forest, so you know junipers are going to do well. Our natural native Arizona cypress, it grows wild throughout the mountains that surround us. Many of the, the evergreens you see out in the forest, they're not junipers at all. They're cypress. They're related to each other. They grow in the same spot. The only way I can tell is one puts on a, a berry, junipers, and the other one puts on a tiny cone, cypress. So here's on a cypress. Both are silvery blue. Both grow, they can be anywhere from 8, 10 feet tall to and, and basically 4, 5 feet wide to the monsters can get 25 feet tall and 12 feet wide. They're huge. They take up real estate. Um and, and everything in between. Californians love their Italian cypress. Grows to the moon, 50 feet tall, three feet wide. It's a pencil growing up out of the ground in your backyard. You can really do a lot with them design-wise. So you, you frame vistas. You put an Italian cypress on either side, and I defy, it's like a picture frame. You go, look at this mountain. Look at our view. Look how glorious it is. Look at the rainbows. Look, there's unicorns in the background. That's how you use, that's how you frame. You force people that come and you know, look at your deck or your back patio. You go, look between here. Don't look over there. That's where, the, that's where the neighbor's shed is. Look over here. So you can force in a design element, you can force people to focus in a certain part of the, of the landscape. That's how you use aspens. Use aspens the same way. Aspens are 50 feet tall by you know five or six feet wide. And then they sucker out and they come up and grow in clusters or groups. You, you use them the same way in, in, as a design element in your landscape. The, the upright evergreens, though, they can be everything in between. I'd say number one seller, uh, probably Arizona cypress. Uh, I, I personally use Spartan junipers. It's a juniper that grows up eh, 10, 12 feet tall by six feet wide. Beautiful green, green, green. Just rich, thick, green foliage. If you need several uh, evergreens, one of my favorites to design with, especially a big, long hedge, especially for smaller yards, blue arrow junipers. Blue arrows, they got this rich silver blue. They're just a pretty color. Uh, they're sterile. They don't put on a lot of pollen. So they're, they're just pure, nice green, silver blue, actually, kind of foliage. It gets up way above head height, so 10 feet tall, and it stays tight, so narrow, so maybe three, four feet wide. So it's just perfect, consistent way to plant things. That's your upright evergreens, and there's a lot more than that. I mean, there's, there's literally hundreds of plants. Those are the best sellers are my favorites. Then you go to large shrubs. Number one seller in large shrub. These are things above head height or above. Otherwise, it's not a privacy. So boxwoods, they're great. They just don't grow very tall. So they only get up about chest high, hip high or so. So not good for privacy. Low barriers coming to, you know, hedges coming to the front door, great. But not a privacy screen. There we move up to the number one seller, red-tipped photinia. All the new growth is red. This is a monster shrub. This thing grows 12 by 12 by 12. It just, I mean, it gets huge. It takes up real estate. 
if you only want it to get six feet wide, probably not the best choice because you'll be pruning on that thing like every other month. You'll be a slave to this plant. It's too aggressive for most yards, actually. And it, deer eat it, gets diseased. Generally, I don't care. I don't have red tip photinia in my own yard because I don't want the maintenance. For me, I shifted and I went to Eliagnus or silverberry. This is the native evergreen that grows wild here. This one grows up about eight feet tall, six feet wide, has a bright, bright yellow type of foliage. It's, it's blue with a yellow highlight to it. It's variegated, evergreen, slow, fa I mean, fast growing, but slow water use. So I'll, I'll put it on the drip system until it gets up to size, and then I just cut it off of all further care. It never gets watered again that I know of, that I can remember, because it's a native. It just grows wild here. Animals don't eat it. doesn't get any disease. It just It's one of us. It just grows wild here. Why not move to uh, native kind of stuff if you're out against the forest where you get antelope and deer and javelina? It's a no-brainer. Don't put red tip botinia. You'll want to put Eliagnus. It's a nice thick hedge that's going to fill in, block things that nothing you're going to have no issues with. Another one that's kind of like that is Cotoneaster, or Cotton Easter is how people spell it, but Cotoneaster is how you pronounce it. There's a red clusterberry Cotoneaster. Again, this is a 10 by 10 by 10 hedge, evergreen. Puts on a real pretty white flower in the spring. Red berries in the fall, great choice for privacy screens or just I want more green in the backyard. I got a corner, you know, cinder block fence I want to soften up. Well, red clusterberry cotoneaster, great choice for in the backyard. And it also blocks things if you let it get big enough. Those are my choices. Just a few things help that I was recommending to customers that were shopping for privacies. You could take a look at all of those at top10plants.com. That's our digital garden center you can access from any digital device. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden Companion plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Butterfly Bush, and Trumpeting Vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Wondering why the grass is always greener on the other side? Well, it's probably because your neighbor used the all-purpose fertilizer from Waters Garden Center. Monsoon is right around the corner, and it's the perfect time to feed your plants. Waters All-Purpose Fertilizer is the only organic made especially for Arizona mountain soils. Don't buy a bunch of different fertilizer for your flowers, veggies, trees, or grass. This one does it all. The plants on your side will be happier, healthier, well, greener. Safe, natural, organic. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. If I could ask help from the community, we are helping uh, Prescott Frontier Rotary collect basically bathroom items for the teen's closet. It's a nonprofit. Both of those are nonprofits. I'm a Rotarian helping our club out. But they're trying to get basically toiletry kind of items for the teen closet. A, a nonprofit that's been hit really hard by the community. It's kind of hard. It's hard for me to see nonprofits get hit so hard. But for the boys, they're looking for like deodorants and three-in-one body wash, kind of face wash, shampoos, toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorants, floss, mouthwash, just all the bathroom things that a teenage boy you think would, would need. We've got a big blue box here at the Garden Center. We're going to collect through the end of the month, next week and a half or so. Just throw it right in there. We would love it. You could throw a check right in there, probably a check Drop it off at the counter, and we'll actually give it to the club. You can write it to Prescott Frontier Rotary. For the girls, they need regular size shampoo bottles, conditioner, again, toothbrush, toothpaste, 
They're asking not baking soda types. I don't know what that means, but I'm just giving you the list. Deodorant, disposable razors, mouthwash, sugarless gum of all things, and slip-on socks. That's what they're asking for. We're just collecting it. I'm going to take it right over to them. And we're just a collection point that's easy, that's recognizable for this particular nonprofit, Teens Closet. Love your help. Now through probably September 1, we'll be collecting those things. We filled the box up already. They just picked it up, emptied it, and now it's it's ready to receive some more items. Thank you for those that already helped us. That is just, just tremendous. It means a lot. So we're trying to be our company, uh, Waters Garden Center, Inc. We've been here 58 years. And we truly believe, we're hoping that if Waters Garden Center was gone and was not here in our community, it would be missed. That the community would not be as good without our company. So that's what our family believes. We actually, our kingdom statement truly, truly is bottom line, we want to show God's love. That's our bottom bottom line. And beauty. That's where we pull the pieces in. So if you're not a God kind of person, fine. And we just want to show love and beauty, but we we we're a we believe there's some, a higher cause behind besides ourselves, and so as a a company of of higher, it's just things are bigger than ourselves. We truly believe that, and it also when we have a year like this, when it's just you are out of control, there's nothing you can do yourself. Well, at least we believe there's a God out there that is looking after us, loving on us, and we're just a conduit to help help spread that love to show his beauty. So anyway, or her beauty, however you believe. And I don't want to, this, I'm, this is not a religious statement at all. It's just who we are. And so we're helping to make the community better. And hopefully we'll be missed if ever we were, if Waters Garden Center wasn't here, we truly want to believe that. If you want to take a look at plants, uh, what classes are coming online, look at watersgardencenter.com. We actually put a, a button at the very front that says shop the garden center. We actually set up a shopping cart. You can see the evergreens we were talking about earlier in the show. You can see the tall shrubs, what the prices are. You can research sizes, how big they grow, how many we have in stock. It's all right there. We're starting to get some orders in this week. It's very exciting to launch something and people actually receive it, look at it, place an order. It's very fun. The whole team is is excited. They're going, what do we do, boss? What do we do? Go, we'll pull it together, put their name on it, and call them. Let's just follow up on things. So anyway, you can take a look at the classes. There's your button right below that that says this year's cl- this week's classes. It's interesting. We had, a, we had about 20 students at last week's class and 288 online tuned in watching. So it's very fun, kind of fun to watch all that. Ken and Lisa Lane, we camp out here at Waters Garden Center throughout the week, and we love talking to fans of the show. Thanks for tuning in. Waters Garden Companion Plants for August are Radio Red Salvias, Butterfly Bush, and Trumpeting Vine. Large clusters of red and orange flowers create a dramatic show all season long with Waters Trumpet Vine. This vigorous vine thrives in heat and blooms profusely with neglect. Quickly covers large areas as a ground cover, spilling over retaining walls, screening a fence, or cloaking arbors. Guaranteed to attract more hummingbirds and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.